Hello everyone, my name is Vitalik Ablaev and I'm a sales engineer at Plexum. Welcome to the Plex Model of the Month video series. In this month's video, I will be showing a simple example of an RT box being used as a rapid control prototyping platform. The box will be connected to a Texas Instruments booster pack which will produce desired currents through an RL load representing a DC motor. Our next Model of the Month video could feature your model. If you have a Plex model you're willing to share, send it to info at plexum.com with a description of a power stage and controller. If your model gets picked, we will make a video of it and post it to our LinkedIn and YouTube pages while publicly crediting your work. The Plex RT box is a state-of-the-art real-time simulator capable of both hardware in the loop testing and rapid control prototyping. As I mentioned, I will be using it in the latter configuration today, meaning the RT box will function as the controller rather than emulate the power stage. Connected directly to the RT box is a TI booster pack, which is a driver stage used to evaluate motor control applications. It has three MOSFET based half bridges and a DRV A305 motor gate driver, and it usually clips onto a TI launchpad controller. In this video, I'll be bypassing the launchpad stage and using the RT box to communicate the necessary input and output signals instead. This will enable me to model my power stage and controller in Plex, and then use the Plex coder to automatically generate and upload the real-time capable controller C code onto the RT box. This replaces the step of using TI's Code Composer Studio to program a launchpad. Let's dive into the model. On the top level, I have a simple power stage which represents what I have connected to the RT box. I'm only using two out of the three half bridges of the booster pack, so I can model it as an H bridge, as you see here. An RL load is used to represent the winding resistance and inductance of a DC motor without the back EMF. Now let's double click on this subsystem to see the controller. I have an open and a closed loop configuration within the same model here. For the closed loop, the measured load current gets subtracted from my load current set point to create an error value. A simple PI controller turns that into a voltage set point value which then gets divided by the maximum 24 volts my two booster pack phases can supply across my H bridge. The resulting signal is a duty cycle value which is used to actuate the two pairs of switches in a complementary fashion. The analog in, PWM out, and digital out blocks you see in this schematic are the communication channels to and from the RT box and are required for a real-time simulation. This is how the RT box knows which signals are coming in and out of its digital and analog out pins. During a regular offline simulation in Plex, however, these blocks simply populate ports in my subsystem block. This lets me route these same signals to and from my offline power stage model, making it very convenient for me to use the same Plex model for both offline and real-time simulations. To summarize, when I run a regular offline Plex simulation, this controller subsystem will be communicating with this power stage model here, thus letting me safely test everything before I even use the RT box. When I perform a real-time simulation, everything in this controller subsystem will be running on the RT box and communicating with the actual power stage of the TI booster pack rather than this power stage I modeled in Plex. With the analog in block, we're specifying which two pins of the RT box will be receiving the two low side switch currents from the booster pack, and we're performing routine scaling and offsetting. Our PWM out blocks specify which RT box pins will be sending out the switching signals for the four switches. Notice that these blocks also act as the PWM waveform generators themselves and compare the provided duty cycle value to a carrier waveform with a particular switching frequency, phase shift, and other parameters here. This is also where one can choose to synchronize the generated PWM waveform with the step size of the real-time model if the former is an integer multiple of the latter. Among other I.O. blocks, we also have a PWM out variable block, which generates variable frequency PWM signals. Both of these PWM out type blocks will be executed and updated at the FPGA frequency of 133 MHz, regardless of the model step size, providing ultra-high fidelity PWM signals on those digital out pins. The same is true for any PWM or quadrature encoder signal coming in or out of the RT box. Lastly, this digital out block is simply passing the value 1 to the enable gate pin of the booster pack, letting me interact with it. 
Let's first run this model in an open loop fashion to prove to ourselves that we get the desired voltage across the load. My actual 1 ohm resistor and 250 microhenry inductor can only handle 5 amps of current, so I am limiting my set point value to plus or minus 5 volts. I can run a simulation and ensure myself that with a set point of 1 volt, I get a mean value of 1 volt across my resistor and inductor over one switching period of 0.1 milliseconds. Now we can use a step function to test the response of my closed loop controller. Since I have already tuned this controller, we can run a closed loop offline simulation and verify that our output current and voltage mean values match their set points. We are now ready to go to real time. Before we do that, however, we have the option of generating code for the controller subsystem and running that code in offline simulation first. I can do so by going to Coder, Coder Options, and selecting my controller subsystem which has been enabled for code generation. I need to specify the discretization step size. In this case, I'm choosing one microsecond. Next, I'm going over to the Target tab and selecting Generic and pressing Build. Plex has just generated generic C and H files, which can be opened. I can now switch the controller subsystem over to the code gen mode, and during the next simulation, Plex will use the generated code for the controller instead of the block components. This intermediate step is optional, but it lets you make a much more educated guess when choosing your step size, as well as test out the code which will be running in real time before using the RT box. As you can see, the offline and code gen traces match, thus validating our step size choice. Now we're ready to run a real-time simulation. I keep the same step size, select an RT box on the network, and generate RT box specific code, which Plex then automatically uploads onto my RT box. As soon as the blue LED lights up, the discretized C code for my controller subsystem is now running in real time on a CPU core of the RT box. The box is now sending PWM signals to the booster pack board and receiving the currents in the two lower switches, making it a closed loop system. I can verify that my mean current values across one switching period match for any current set point which I am able to change on the fly. Negative and positive values would spin the theoretical motor in different directions. I hope you enjoyed this video on rapid control prototyping using Plex and the RT box. The next step for this model will be to add the back EMF source and use an actual DC motor and perhaps eventually implement a speed or position controller using our quadrature encoder counter hill library block. Please submit your Plex models to info at plexin.com for a chance to have your model displayed. For more videos and other information, please visit our website at www.plexim.com. Thanks for watching.